Hello, my name is Michael Smith. Today we're going to do a simple texture, a procedural texture, and it's based on the procedural texture basics series that's on my channel. If you haven't done that yet and you're not familiar with how procedural textures work, I would strongly recommend it before you jump into this. Uh, but if you've already done that or you're basically familiar, this is one of two methods to create cracks on an object. So. I am using Blender 3. You don't have to use Blender 3. Some of these things are in a slightly different place or maybe look slightly different, but most of this should work exactly the same in either series. And I have a video on this for Blender 297, maybe 98, that you can go look at instead. I'll put that in the description. Okay, so starting here, we're going to do a few things. First, we're going to go to the Shading tab, which is where we're going to work on our material. Then we're going to click the top left corner of this window and drag it to the left, and this one and drag it to the left because we're not using those. Then we're going to ditch the sphere. I'm going to click it, press delete to get rid of it, go to add mesh uh, UV sphere. Then I'm going to use the mouse, middle mouse wheel to zoom in on it a bit. I'm going to go down here and select the material. And now we're ready to generate our cracks. So this first method, what we're going to do is use the noise texture, which generates a nice uh, smooth but random noise. And I'll show you what that looks like now. So let's go to our texture coordinate. Let's add uh, texture noise. And we're going to use a generated coordinate system for this. If you don't know what that is and you care, go look at my tutorial on generated coordinates and I'll tell you all about it. And then we're going to take this uh, FAC, which is just a grayscale output, and lock it into the base color of this texture. And when we do that, uh, it's going to be a little hard to see because uh, it's not super bright. But what you can see is we get this almost clouds, right? So it goes from one at the top to zero at the bottom. Uh, in gentle hills and troughs. And so the, a convenient thing you can do with this uh, is create basically outlines of continents. So the way you would do that, and I'm going somewhere with this, I promise, add converter color ramp. So we're going to take this ramp from, from black to white. And all we're going to do is basically dial up the black. So we're saying anything below this point is going to be solid black and anything above is going to be a gradient. We're going to keep pulling it up until we get something that looks a bit like continents. You can also scale this texture. So if what you're getting are more like small islands, we can make that bigger. Um, so we get something that looks a bit more like continents. And then uh, I'm gonna take this white end and I'm gonna drag it down to make these more solid. So there you go. So this is how you get continents. Effectively, you've defined a sea level. So everything with a fact value above a certain value is white, everything below it is black. So now what we wanna do is create a uh, height map where along these borders uh, exactly where I currently have the coast uh, I want that to be zero or the lowest point and then I want it to go up to white on either side and I'm just going to use the color ramp to do that I'm going to hit this plus here and that's going to add another point which is a little bit gray we're going to take that up to white and then I'm going to put these two points these two white right along this edge and this gives me this nice wavy coastline, if you will. You can play around with these settings like roughness to make things a little more interesting or detail to get a little more, oh, I don't know, what would these be? Fjords or whatever for your for your uh, texture, for your cracks. Um, and now we're just going to treat this as a height map. Uh, we've been talking about it as one to render cracks onto this object. So there are two ways to do that. One is the bump map. So a bump map doesn't actually change the topology, it doesn't move vectors anywhere. And we add it by going add a vector bump and we put the color in as the height uh, and then we put the bump map into the normal. So what this is doing is it just changes the normal which is effectively the way that the light bounces off the object at a particular position and it uses this uh, noise texture <coughs> A height map that we've created to decide how we want the light to bump off. So if you look at it, you know, at the side, we haven't we haven't changed the geometry at all. You can see here on the left or the right hand side, it's still flat. But the way that the light's bouncing off now looks like it's it's got some texture. Um, the other thing we can do is actual actual displacement. So with displacement, we're actually going to change the geometry. To do that, we got to do a few things. The first thing we're going to do is go over to the right here and click this render properties. Under there, we're going to change the render engine from EV, which does not support displacement, I don't think anyway, to cycles, which definitely does, and what I usually use. The second thing we're going to do is we're actually not looking at cycles right now. We're looking at a texture preview. So we're going to go up here to the top right and say viewport shading, and this is going to give us actually cycles. Uh, this is still bump mapping. If it looks like bump mapping, you're not wrong. 
Uh, so we're going to change this to displacement. The other thing we're going to do, if, if you don't have this, it's fine. It's just faster if you do. I'm going to go to GPU compute. And then the other one I'm going to do is go to experimental. Uh, you know, we can do it without this, but this makes life easier. And I'll show you why in a minute. Once we've done that, now we're going to click on our object. We're going to go again over here and go to our modifier properties. So this allows us to take the object and modify it in ways that don't destroy the underlying geometry, but add to it. And what we're going to do in this case is subdivision surface. So subdivision surface takes the surface you have, and you can see here, changes the number of subdivisions, adds to them, makes it more smooth effectively. What we're going to do is add adaptive subdivisions. Adaptive subdivisions uh, dice up this object, but according to the size of a pixel or a dot on it on the screen. And what that means is it divides up more on the bits that are close to the screen and less on the things that are far away where you're just going to lose that detail anyway. So now what we've done is add a large amount of dicing to this object so that there's a lot of geometry to work with. And now we can deform the vertices in that geometry to actually create these cracks. Uh, if we hadn't done that, when we try to create the cracks, if there's only a vertex here, and then the next point on the geometry is over here somewhere, that's the most we can move, right? Just these two. And it's not going to look like a crack. It's just going to look weird. So this allows us to actually change it in a finely detailed way. The way we're going to do that, we'll go back to our texture. And we'll go to add vector displacement. And displacement looks a whole lot like uh, bump mapping. We're going to take our color, put it into the height. We're going to take displacement, plug it in now into the displacement. And now it looks like it did something. It didn't. It just added another layer of bump mapping. So this is the next thing we have to change. We're going to go down to the right here, material properties. We're under a surface. We're going to go to settings. We're going to scroll down in displacement. Currently, it says bump only. We're going to take that and go to displacement only. And now, boom, uh, too much. So uh, we're going to scale down the strength of this to something a little more manageable, uh, maybe even 0 0.05. Uh, OK, and now what we're getting is uh, much more of a actual change to the geometry. So if you look on it inside now, it's not just a change to the, 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 the light. It's actually changing the surface. Um, the other thing is it looks a bit chunky here. That's because in our viewport, if we go back over here and go to sampling, uh, uh, sorry, to the render and go under subdivision, uh, currently it's, it's at most doing every uh, uh, eight pixels. We're going to down that to four, which is going to help a bit to make that more crisp. Then we're going to go back over here to modifier properties. We're only viewing one level of subdivision. We're going to up that to four. And now you can see this a lot better. So this is going to look a lot better when you render it um, than the bump map, but it's a lot slower to render effectively because it's actually adding so much geometry. So that's a way to make cracks. Uh, part one, part two, we're going to do it better with Veronoi. Uh, and if you wanted to play with this, obviously, you know, maybe you want it rougher around the edges. Uh, maybe you want the scale different, etc. So you can play around with these settings and get different kinds of settings uh, for your cracks. Uh, I don't think they look very much like cracks, even, even when you get the settings, you know, approximately right. So we're going to do it with Veronai next. Hope that was helpful and you learned something. Thanks.